Now I want to go ahead and talk about graph mode on Antares Autotune Pro. In many ways, this is similar to the software Melodyne if you've ever used that for vocal correction. It allows you to adjust the individual tuning of notes inside your sequences, and this can allow for much more natural sounding vocal tuning or interesting creative effects. In graph mode, you also have the option to adjust each of those notes separately without relying on the auto mode. So it's essentially like a separate pitch correction engine that you can use inside of this plugin. It also has the ability to adjust the timing of performances, which could be really great if you're trying to adjust individual notes that were slightly too long or too short, or you're trying to sort of pocket something in around a beat, you could use this plugin to do so. The cool thing is all of these edits are non-destructive, so the original audio remains unaffected, so you can revert back to the original performance, or you can revert individual notes back to original performances if you need to. So first we have to go ahead and load in some audio into the plugin. Went ahead and just loaded up a simple vocal sample that we worked on in the last video. It just has a few notes, but I elected for something simple here so we can really show off the features inside of this plugin. Hey. So it's just simple vocal, but it'll be good for our example here. So I went ahead and clicked over into graph mode. You also notice that this is resized individually from the auto mode. If you'd like to adjust the sizing of this, just go down to this resize icon here on the bottom right hand side, and that'll give you the ability to go ahead and mess around with the size of this interface. So first we have to go ahead and load our audio into the sequencer here. So in order to do that, we have to scan it in manually. In some DAWs like Pro Tools, you don't have to manually scan everything in. You could just automatically send all the audio by bouncing to the plugin. Uh, but in our case, inside of Ableton, we have to manually scan it in. So first we have to choose one of the modes that we want to use. These are over here, these are the different track modes. We can either do the pitch mode, which will track the pitch of our arrangement, or we can do pitch and time, which will give us the ability to adjust the pitch as well as the timing of our audio. The important thing to note about this is if we choose pitch and time, it's going to make a copy of our audio and load it into a plugin folder on our computer. So that way it can make all these edits non-destructively but that will take up a little bit more space in your computer. So just be aware of that if you have tons of vocals that you're tuning all the time and you're taking up a lot of space in your computer, that's what's happening here. So that's just something to be aware of, but I almost always use pitch and time. So I have the ability to adjust the timing of my vocal as well as the pitch. So all we have to do is hit pitch and time. That'll enable this scanning mode right here. And then we can go ahead and go to the beginning of our performance and just scan it in. Go ahead and let the entire thing play just so we get all the different notes at the end. And now it went ahead and scanned that into our sequence. You can also see this lined up with the timing of my DAW, which you can see over here as well, starting at the very beginning. Or if I had this start later, it would also line up as well. So that's nice. This plugin automatically syncs everything to the playback engine inside of your DAW. So now that we have our audio scanned in, we see these new notes have appeared on this main graph view. This is where the main vocal part is going to be loaded into this graphical interface, and we have each note inside of our vocal performance, and we have the ability to go ahead and edit those. Before we get too far here, it is worth noting that this graph mode is separate from the auto mode, so we don't have both the graph mode and the auto-tune mode running at the same time. This mode works independently from the other, so if you want that auto-tune effect, go ahead and just enable this, but if you want to tune the individual notes, you'll have to use graph mode. So this is where the main pitch and time editing takes place. After tracking everything in, we get this interface, and this basically acts like a MIDI editor, but for our vocals. So now I can click on these different waveform displays, and I can drag them around. And it will change the note that's being played back. And depending on how you have this all set, it'll either sound more robotic and synthetic, or it can sound more natural depending on what you need for a given performance. The other section on this main window that you'll want to be aware of that you use quite often, especially with more complex vocal performances as you're scanning around a recording, is going to be this waveform graph here along the bottom. This is used to quickly navigate and zoom around your main graph. If you want to show or hide this view, so if you don't see this by default, go ahead and click on this little icon over here on the right hand side. That'll hide that if you don't need it, or you can go ahead and click on that to show that view. So basically what this lets you do is see an overview of all the audio that's loaded into the Autotune Pro's graph mode. So I can see the end of my performance and the beginning all in one singular view. The cool thing is I can use this to quickly scroll around the interface. This is super helpful, especially if I'm working with like an entire performance. Let's say I had the verse and the chorus and the different verses and bridge sections all loaded up into the plugin. I can use this to quickly scroll around the different portions of my audio to jump to them. So let's say we want to kind of work on this last note sequence here. Go ahead and click over to this section. 
And you can see that now it has went ahead and jumped over to that. And it lets me just quickly see that individual node that's part of that last section. There's two different modes for selecting things on this waveform. Right now we have it set to this all mode. Whenever that is enabled, we can just click around this waveform view and it's gonna go ahead and jump. Then if I have the tie mode, now it's just linked up to this different sections inside of my sequencer. So if I have them selected, I can go ahead and click and drag to kind of zoom in there. Or I can sort of scroll around in this view here and you can see that it's gonna go ahead and update with my waveform. So it's just different ways of kind of viewing that. This almost works kind of in conjunction with the view and zoom controls here. By the way, I'm just using my Mac trackpad right now to pinch and zoom. We'll cover all the zoom states here in a moment, but that's just used to kind of quickly scroll around everything. I usually keep this on all mode because then I can just quickly jump between different sections of my vocal. I find that's a little bit more helpful, especially whenever I'm working with longer vocal performances. So then we have these zoom states that are over here on the left-hand side. These are used to quickly toggle between different levels of zoom in the main graph, kind of like the zoom control hotkeys that are available in Pro Tools. These basically enable you to save a current zoom setting. You know, all you have to do is just zoom in to what you need. Let's we'll say you want to zoom into this note here at the bottom. And then I can go ahead and hold Alt on Windows or Option on Mac. So I'll go ahead and hold Option, hit number one. And then if I'm going to zoom out, and by the way, I'm just using the pinch to zoom on my MacBook. If I go ahead and hit one, it's going to go ahead and zoom into that kind of preset level of zoom. So no matter what section I have selected, I can click on that and it's going to go ahead and zoom in. So let's say we wanted to zoom in over here, hit that, and now we can go ahead and zoom in to that level of zoom that we have set. So that's helpful if you're doing tons of editing, you're trying to work really quickly, you can use those zoom states to kind of jump around. Other than that, if I want to zoom or navigate around this interface, I can use the pinch controls on a Mac trackpad, or I can zoom out here by heading on this minus icon, or zoom in by hitting the plus icon, and same with these ones over here. I can make this interface smaller, or I can make those individual nodes bigger, depending on what I need. I'll go ahead and just zoom in just a little bit so it's a bit easier to see everything, and then I'll go ahead and zoom out. And by the way, these scroll sections in the bottom also work, so you can click on these and scroll around with them. And same with this one on the left-hand side, if you want to quickly scroll up and down. The nice parts, you can see that there's this waveform view here, so I can kind of see the various different portions of my audio signal all at once, which can be super helpful. This can all be toggled and configured inside the preferences, depending on what you'd like to see. So if you don't want to see this audio waveform, you actually can turn that off. I find it makes everything a little bit easier whenever you're editing your audio. The next thing that we have is going to be pitch tracking and correction objects. So now we have everything scanned in. We kind of know how to zoom and navigate around our different sections of audio. Now I want to go ahead and talk about the different types of pitch tracking and correction options available here. So the first one is just going to be clicking all these notes to create various different types of pitch adjustments. So you can drag them around and create different types of notes. So obviously that's very extreme, so it sounds kind of robotic, but in our case, it just enables me to play around with that individual note separate from the other notes inside of my sequence. I'm going to go ahead and undo that by hitting Command and Z or Control and Z, or you can use the undo and redo functions here along the top. We also have the ability to make pitch curves instead of these main pitch correction notes, which could be used for more precise editing. Usually, I find myself just using these curves here, but you do have some different options depending on what you need. So if I wanted to see those curves, I could go ahead and hit Create Curves over here in this menu, and now it gives me just those pitch correction curves. So this is the actual contour of that vocal. You can see there's a lot more variation, and that gives me just a little bit more precise editing options. So I could click on my performance and drag that around, I could go ahead and select a section of that performance and adjust it. It just gives me a little bit more fine-tuned control over my curve. So this is great, especially if you're going to go ahead and draw in things with the more advanced tools we'll talk about later. Those could just be helpful depending on what you're needing. So this mode is just used for more precise audio editing. The next mode under Create Curves that you'll want to be aware of is going to be the Auto Mode. It allows you to load in your auto mode settings that you have set inside of the main section of Autotune. So let's say we wanted that hard-tuned Autotune effect. We'll go ahead and put the retune speed all the way up, and I could hit this, and it's going to go ahead and retune that vocal like it would with an Autotune effect. So it's kind of a way of almost printing the Autotune to your vocal, and then you could go through and mess around with the individual notes. So there's a lot of different customization options available here. So you can see the visual feedback there. You can also hear it. Now it sounds like that classic kind of T-Pain effect. That's because it went through and hard-tuned the vocal and then loaded it into Autotune Pro. The next option is going to be Create Notes From. 
And this is used to create those note blocks that you saw earlier. So if I hit this, now we get those note blocks. And you can also see there is a little bit of that pitch curve there as well, letting you know what's happening. And that gives me these note blocks that I can then drag around to adjust as my performance is. The other control here is going to be this density control. This will configure how responsive the plugin is to generating these notes by default. So if we put that up to 100%, you'll see that now we kind of get this note here in the middle. And then we also get this note happening on this kind of tie right here. So it's just a little bit more sensitive in terms of generating these notes by default. If we put that down to lower values, it's going to be a little bit more general in the way that it grabs the notes. And then if we put that all the way down, then it's really just going to grab kind of those main blocks, depending on what we're feeding into Autotune. It is also worth noting that these curves, so this green part right here, is the actual pitch line of the audio. So for example, you can see at the beginning of this note, it goes slightly out of tune and then back down. So this lets you kind of know exactly what is happening with the performance, so you can really dial in the pitch of your audio. The other basic control that I find is super helpful here is going to be the nudge control. So for example, let's say this note was slightly out of tune. I can use this to nudge it up or nudge it down. So we're getting very small changes here. I can use that to dial in the exact pitch of that audio. So right now it's a little bit flat. We can use that to push it back up. And then we can use that to really dial in the exact pitches of my audio. So I find basically just selecting these notes and then playing around with the nudge values to really make everything sound right in terms of pitch is a really great way of creating much more natural vocal pitch correction. So you can either print in that auto-tune setting if you want that very extreme synthetic pitch correction, or you can just use something like the nudge mode and playing around with that different values here. So that's kind of a basic overview of the functions and also loading audio into this view. From here, we're going to dive into all of these tools you can see along the top, because there's a lot of different advanced editing options that are available here, depending on what you like to do with your audio. So thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you in the next one.